Hello, hello, and welcome, hello, welcome hello, along to the Philly Boosters. Yeah, yeah, it's the Philly Booster Show here. Yeah, it's the Philly Booster Show here on the on the radio. Because you probably can't, because you don't even have a telephone. Who knows? It's gonna get here and then it's still knows. It's still in here and then it's still here. Who knows? It's lahi, it's lahi, it's lahi, it's lahi, it's lahi. Oh God, my, it's lahi, it's lahi. Oh God, my, he's a great man. Fair play to him. Yeah, it's the Philly Booster yeah, show, show here on the, on the, on the radio. And it's the Philly Buster show here on the radio. On the radio, on the radio. That gets longer every time I hear it. It does, it doesn't. <laughs> You're here listening to the Philly Busters present, uh, present the Comedy Hour on Limerick City Community Radio. You can find us on Facebook. Um, what's our handle, Adam? At the Philly Busters. You can get us at oh, the... Oh, no, no, that's the Twitter. I was ahead of you there, you see. Oh. On the, fa- on the Facebook. That's what I was actually asking you. What? That's what I was asking you. I thought you were talking about on the Facebook. On the uh, on the book of face, you can just put in filibusters and you'll get us. Uh, on Twitter, you can get us at the filibusters, or you can text in, which is zero eight three four four treble six five five. That's oh eight three four four treble six five five. Only uh, call in if you got a sexy voice. Yeah, yeah, because we only tolerate sexy here. Only that. in uh, LCCR. Uh, so I hope you're having a good Sunday. I, yeah, good Sunday. Uh, we're joined. We're just here in the studio, myself and Adam, this week. Yeah, we don't need the rest of them. You see, no. never mind them. No, never uh, mind that Dun that that Dunnick or or John or or that little dwarf. What's his name? Gerald, I believe is his name. That's the one. Don't need them. Just us. So what have we on our show, Adam? Well, we've got lots of new things. Lots of new we've things. Got lots we're, of new things. We're redoing our. We're redoing our show. Uh, we're trying to. We're rejigging the show to I sexy it up this week. We're rejigging it not because we need to, because everyone's left us, but because we want to. Exactly. <laughs> so we've got. Uh, we've got as usual. We've got the news. Then we've got a little. We've got a new feature called "A Needed Guide to Living Swankily." Swankily. Oh yes. Events. What's coming up in Limerick? And at the end, we will be closing with a philosophical question. And some dirty great big tunes to go along with that. Dirty great big tunes. I was in charge of picking the dirty great big tunes this week. Scratch so the bit I, about the great. I have some doozies actually here. The Water Boys, the whole of the moon, because the Water Boys are going to be playing in Dolan's this week. Gatorade. Hosier's new single. I've never actually heard a Hosier song. Have you not? No. Oh, wow. First. How did you escape it? The name. I just know it'll not be. Burn. Hosier, it'll just annoy me. O'Burn. O'Burn isn't a good name either. It's just, just Burn. Hosier O'Burn, yeah. Um, his, his real name is Hosier. He, that, his surname is Hosier O'Burn. Oh, so it's not like his... No, I think his father was Hosier and his mother was O'Burn or something. Um, still off. I, I, mean, think, it's, it's, I think it's kind of interesting. It's not so bad if it's not his, his first name. Ah, uh, he's got some doozies of songs. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how you even avoided him. He can do no wrong at this point. He's just our greatest export of 2014. Our greatest cultural export, Hosier. Okay, I, I'll take that challenge. Okay. We also have Paul Simon's Christmas song to get us all in the Christmas spirit because Christmas is apparently coming up or so the uh, shops would make you think. Yeah, they keep telling us that. I don't believe it. Be t- it'd be too coincidental. When do you put up your Christmas tree, Adam? 8th of December. Exactly, same as. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the traditional... That's that It's culty Christmas. We wait until the 8th of December and up with the Christmas tree then. Yeah. And anything before it. I have vowed not to spend a single penny on anything that I wouldn't be buying ordinarily. Is that... Before, Christmas, before the 8th of December, just out of spite for the shops for putting up all that nonsense <laughs> but nonetheless I decided to put in a, a, a Christmas song and the reason I did it was just because I was listening to it anyway on my my Paul Simon album and the 8th is a Monday this year as well so you have no excuse not to do it on the 8th put it up on the, on the start of the week there you go Monday Christmas tree you're grand <laughs> I just, it does it annoys me it's just like I, I was walking I was up by the parkway yesterday and there was this house that had Oh, it's so hard not to curse when you're angry, isn't it? <laughs> they had those lights and stuff on, on the house. And like, Stop it. It's not Christmas yet. You just look like an idiot. A big neon idiot. 
I remember um, being in New York a few years ago and I had a cousin over there. He's a priest over there and he drove me down just specifically. There was an Italian family who went way overboard on the uh, <laughs> <laughs> on the Christmas decor and he wanted to drive me down to show me <laughs> how ridiculous the house looked. And was, was it amazing? Um, it was pretty ridiculous. There's, a, there's always this house... Um on the way from Kilkenny to Limerick, I couldn't tell you exactly where it is. I think it's somewhere in Tip, and you can just see it from a mile off. It's it's on like it's on the motorway or near enough one of the main roads, and it's just violently decorated. I often wonder how much the uh, electricity bills must go up on those houses that have a ridiculous amount of lights. Like, do do they make that much of an impact? Uh, those well, no, type of lights. They, they, if if you get the blinking lights, then you will only pay half as much. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> frugal Adam. <laughs> okay, and uh, since we're talking about the Christmas, well, I might as well start off with the Christmas song. Go for it. Uh, this is "Getting Ready for Christmas Day" by Paul Simon. <laughs> That was Paul Simon with uh, Getting Ready for Christmas Day from his newest album, which was released two years ago. Don't ask me what the name of it is. I can't remember. But uh, it's actually a doozy of an album. I would say probably his most uh, intriguing album since Graceland. And it has great undercurrents of uh, of Graceland in it. Would you say it's graceful? No. Oh. Why would I say that, Adam? Because it would wouldn't, be, wouldn't make any sense, Adam. Because it's kind of punny, isn't it? No. It's it's a little bit punny. No. Right. Oh, I, actually, I was telling you, we were so on here now, so we're trying to be entertaining. I'll tell you, like, I was telling you outside. I, I did the whole Tinder thing, and I, I matched with someone on, on Tinder today, and they were sending me jokes, and it was really nice. Any good ones? I'll I'll give you some now. The, I, I think they're really good. And is it a lady or a gentleman you matched with? Uh, Both. No, <laughs> it was a lady. Uh, what happened when the psychic with dwarfism... Dwarfism? It's like a dwarf who's really clever. No. Uh, what happened when the psychic with dwarfism broke out of prison? There was a small medium at large. That's quite funny in fairness. Brilliant. The definition of a whale is a dead giveaway. That one, not so much. So this guy with premature ejaculation problems just a bit comes premature out of nowhere. premature on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like that. I think that's really cool. Yeah. I just got jokes and I was like, yeah, happy out with that. Happy out. Happy days. Um. So what have we in the news, madame? Things in Limerick and outside Limerick as well. Respectively. 2015's Gosh Girl. Yeah, um, 2015's Gosh Girl. This this is actually probably my my favourite story of the week. Is um, Gosh is a magazine and it's... Uh, you know the way magazines for girls, they have sometimes kind of cover girls and they might be looking pretty at the camera and they stick them on the front they cover. They put them on the cover of a magazine. They don't cover them in the way you would with a bull and a gun. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so way that came out. But... Uh, this uh, gentleman, uh, McGovern, what's it, Paul McGovern, he decided to enter the competition and in doing so, he entered a picture of himself sitting above an attractor, smiling out of the tractor door. I think it's a Massey Ferguson 135, not 100% sure on that, but that's what it looks like to me at least. And he's um, sitting above smiling out, but for some reason he got past the editor's uh, who would have, I'm sure, looked at these and gone, yep, they're, they're all our entries. And uh, when he got actually through, he, it got published on the website joe.ie, and lo, and, be lo and behold, lots of people voted for him, as we do. We're, can you vote online? Can I you vote can vote him? online, yeah. Oh, he's got my vote. Uh, I No, I don't think... F- you see, he's gotten through to the final now, and I think that's actually done by judges. I would absolutely love it if he won. <laughs> if, if you could get three judges there with a really doozy, good sense of humour and decide to make him the cover girl of that magazine. Wouldn't it be brilliant, though, if they had the issue of that magazine with his big gawky mayo hair? <laughs> that would be amazing. Paul McGovern, uh, what a dude. He's from Westmead, West actually. Westmead, oh, he's still got a male head. Uh, he got 311 votes to date. Uh, when was this date? Four days ago. And he's gotten through to, true to the final since. And he, it's so he's going to be going down to the final with all the other competing cover girls. Click on it there and see, can we see what the other ones look like? Click here. 
So he got down and he's. I think it's on in one of the nightclubs in Dublin, the, the final, and it's five judges and he's got to sit. Oh no, it's just him. Okay, never mind. He deserves to win anyway. No, here we can get up more pictures of these gosh girls. See, these are the other girls who are entering. Oh. Okay, no, you've lost me now, Paul McGovern. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, lots of lovely girls. Paul McGovern is solely the funniest out of the lot of the given though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's brilliant. We have to give him that. He's definitely got balls. I think that may be the problem. They're in. Yeah. So what else have we in the news, Adam? Uh, Taoiseach not phased by protests on visit to Limerick. I don't know how he cannot be phased by protest. It's kind of like, look at me. I'm completely ignorant of the amount of people who dislike me because of the manner in which I'm ruling them, despite the fact that my job depends on these people's votes. Well, Not necessarily Limerick. We, uh, we in Limerick didn't get to vote him for him as Taoiseach, but we, we did contribute by, by our vote to other people who got to vote for him as Taoiseach. You see... I think, if anything, this respe- this article has given me a little bit now, a very, very nominal amount, more respect for Enda. Oh. Because, no, simply from a PR perspective. We all know that everything is fecked with the water charges. But there's been people like uh, Fine Gael Councillor Keen Kelly saying the treatment of these politicians when they are being protested is disgraceful and that Gardaí are needed at peaceful protests to escort people to their cars and that a lot of these guarantee are uh, ununiformed, which is completely unethical. But mm. Enda comes out and goes, no, no, they're a good, clean protest, they're fine. He's going, yeah, let them protest, because if he castigates them, it'll only get worse. He's playing it as it should be played. Ah, uh, but it's it's gone too far <coughs> at this point in the sense that he's just on to a losing streak, whatever he does. it's. I mean, it's not. he can't have a PR battle, and you can't let on that... <laughs> you don't want these protests, but... Can we bring it back to the whole ununiformed police, though? Yeah. Why do they have those protests? I don't believe that they should have un- ununiformed police and protests. I suppose the idea is to kind of infiltrate the crowd and find out what's going on. Yeah, but you can't be doing that. You can't, but, I mean, in the same sense, it makes sense from a policing perspective that you would have an idea. It makes sense from a policing perspective that there'd be one of them sitting across from us here, where, just in case we said fake. Where I think it would be problematic, however, is if somebody, if if so, a plainclothes policeman was used to testify if somebody got arrested at one, because what you might say to... Are you trying to say that you won't you won't lie to a normal person in the street? Uh, well, I'm just saying that I, I, I'd imagine, you know, when people get angry at these things, they might say just about anything. Yeah. And they mightn't have any anything to back it up, essentially. And to punish someone for that is kind of wrong. Yeah, you're correct. No, I don't believe, I don't want them having plain clothes guards at, at these kind of things at all. Make yourself known. It's a protest against certain kinds of authority mm. you need to show your hand there it's also somewhat dangerous i would imagine you know if a, if a crowd speculates that somebody is spying on them from yeah. within that could turn a little ugly you'd imagine do you reckon that was considered mm. to turn the protests violent therefore now i'm going to ban them yeah, i don't know i think that may be a conspiracy theory too far there's never a conspiracy <laughs> theory too far adam uh, it's it's just uh, it's food for thought anyway. Sure. But um, going to change my name. To but Adam I Cor- I still I still love the fact that there there are good strong protests out there. It kind of shows the bit of backbone that we're not willing to to be ruled without at least without at least a protest. Yeah. To, to show our opposition and show people's opposition. Speaking of showing a a strong front. Would you like to introduce one? Okay, that was, that was a good, uh, Thank that was you. A good segue. Segways. Uh, the Mirror are running with the headline saying, Saucy Italians, nude breast selfies posted online in the name of science. So a ca- there's now a campaign which asks women to take a picture of their boobs alongside a scientific sign. And it now has 19,000 likes on Facebook. And the sign says? I asked on Connorasa, Seta. I have no idea what the... Oh, no, I did, there is a translation of it. I am with Rosetta. Rosetta is to do with the European Space Agency. Okay, Rosetta comes originally from the Rosetta Stone, which was a stone that um, t- was allowed to, I suppose, decipher 
decipher code. It goes back a long time. I just know that little bit of nugget of wisdom. I said I'd throw it out there. Stephen, this is about women showing their tits for science. I don't want to hear about no Rosetta Stones. Yeah, they're showing their boobs. Um, it's wonderful. Now, they're on the mirror, they show some of the pictures, but you can also get them on Twitter. And then there's one that's very, just very clearly not... <laughs> not a boob it's just a big hairy man uh, if you go and you google mirror and saucy Italian nude breast selfies um, of course through google anonymous or whatever it's called incognito um, just just in case your man was looking not safe for work kind of thing your man though reminds me of uh, there's this <laughs> movie made by that's an awkward start to that <laughs> there's this movie made by the guys who made South Park uh, called Orgasmo and it's about a Mormon who becomes a porn star yeah. And they're trying to subvert the whole porn th- porn thing. And it's not a porn movie at all. It's just a comedy. So every time you think you're going to see breasts or a vagina on the screen, just a big hairy arse pops up in front of you and then they cut to a different <laughs> angle. <laughs> it's brilliant. So mm. th- yeah, this guy just reminds me of that where it's like, boobs, 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 big hairy man. It's certainly something that's going to get attention anyway. Well, it's got my attention. It certainly has, Adam. It certainly has your attention. But uh, it's it's great to see um, them getting behind it, and one of the uh, interesting getting behind it, Adam. Getting behind. One of the most interesting things is it started first with the women, image of a woman's breasts and the caption "Twenty five percent of Italians denied the theory of evolution," and in the UK it's sixty percent. Yeah, sixty. Even the Pope is kind of yeah good with evolution. You how backward can you be? I think. Why the UK as well? I mean, they're quite well educated and secular. Ah, I'd say, that's, I'd say that's nonsense. Quite frankly, I can't imagine sixty percent boobs don't lie, Stephen. I, <laughs> I, that, that yeah, that wouldn't make sense. Mm-mm. Yes, there you wow, are. I'm just looking here at the mirrors, like down the side of the page. There's a list of things, and like they've a uh, heading. I saw humans on Mars thirty five years ago. Former NASA employee stunning revelation. And you just, you have to think to yourself, wow, they just threw journalism out the window a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. There you go, responsibility. Or, or logic. Or logic. Or anything else mm. that isn't just, oh, look, boobs. So what have we coming up next, Adam? Next we have... Guide to Living Swankly. Would you want a song before that? Or we'll we? stick in a song. Do. And I'm going to play... I'll play Hosier. You were saying you never heard him before. No. Man who can do no wrong. <laughs> that was Angel of Small Death, the new uh, single by Hosier O'Byrne. Um, who can do no wrong. He's absolutely ripping it up in America at the minute. And I'm underwhelmed. Uh, I don't... Uh, give, him a, give him a go. Give him a proper go. Especially listen to his first, uh, his first single off the album, um, which... Uh, it's gone slip my mind the name of it, but it's absolutely brilliant. Um, no, no, I'm just going to judge him. He's dead to me now. <coughs> oh, yeah, no. There's a reason he's... Um, there's a reason he's so popular. Is he a good looking boy? Um, he is, yeah, he's not. That could be a reason there. It, that's not why he's, he is, it, though he's kind of grungy. Is he? Yeah, he, he looks kind of grungy, I think. He's long but hair. It's one of the things that put me off him, is his girls are mad at him. Mad at him? Mad for him. Yeah. Could be mad at him as well, he could be a bit of a... Uh, he's just, he's a huge talent that just after cropping up, you know. And I'd say he'll be... So is he making, like, sycophantic Irish girls listen to grunge music? It, well, his music isn't grunge. His look is grunge. Oh. Um, his music is very much that what you just heard it. I don't know how to describe that, I suppose. Kind of alternative music in a church. Yeah, Take Me to Church. That was his is first song. Is that what his first that one was, was called? Yeah. Ah, his whole, that song sounded like it was recorded in a church. Or yeah, they, he has that kind of, of, of sound going. Um, Biblical. Biblical. Okay, what have we next on the agenda? We've got a new feature now called The Aegis Guide to Living Swankily. Living Swankily? Yeah. It's the best kind of living. How to live a top class, seven course life on a seven euro budget. Well, no, it's not that detailed, but, you know, being cheap and getting away with it. 
being cheap and getting away with it. So each week we're going to try and look at different topics for this, but for the, this is our very first week doing it, so we're going to keep it quite broad. We're going to look in the realm of couture and cuisine. So Eating, drinking and wearing stuff. So, we're going to initially talk about wine. Adam. Yes. We're, we were what we were doing when we were thinking up of this idea and how we'd approach it is we we're going to look for for wine at around four euros. Now I understand that because of Irish tax, if you buy a wine that costs four euros, that's pretty much mostly tax. Yeah, that's exactly it. I think I think all in all, the wine itself must probably cost about twenty cent or thirty cent. Wow. Um, you know, I mean, because you have bottled transport. And bottles, transport, and tax, yeah. and I'd say the actual wine itself must cost nothing. So, with that in mind, we decided what was our favourite for your wine. And this, okay, now I usually get another one, but this one I start. I, I we, we were talking about this feature, and so yesterday I went out and, and I got it, and um, did the job. <laughs> How did you find? Well, I think I think that's the uh, that's the essence of four euro wine. Essentially, yeah. is it it does the job. Um, I quite liked this one now because you can get awful plonk. You can get very awful wine. Now I reckon the the wine in Tesco for around uh, the five euro mark is nice. I always get that. But after going to this one, the Baron Saint Jean Rouge, which is you know, great name, mm-hmm. uh, it was really really nice. It was. Overall, well balanced, easy drinking with a a black currant and discreet spice flavor with um, you know, a dark purple red kind of violet hue and well integrated tannins that are, that are overall a great feature of this remarkably priced wine. What I like about it compared to the Tesco alternative is um, uh, just on the same topic. I don't think Duns have a four euro wine. No, their cheapest is eight. I no, think. they no, they actually do have one that's I think five or uh, something crew, I believe it's called, but um, it's 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 okay, it's okay. But the this one is from Aldi. It's the Baron Saint John, and uh, what I like about it is it's where while the Tesco one is waterier, waterier, waterier. Well, Stephen, you'll find that that's this because is, this is wine kind of thicker. Yeah, it's because this wine is made from a well-crafted blend of several different grape varieties that produce a very easy drinking and food-friendly experience. Food-friendly experience. Speaking of food, then, what would we have to accompany this, bearing in mind we're on such a tight budget? And I had a good think about it, and um, it was actually, I was chatting with Dunica one day, and he was saying the cheapest food that you can get that can be delicious is, in fact, uh, spaghetti. Can't go wrong with it. Mm. You can get it for hardly anything. But uh, I was thinking back now, I was thinking of a meal that I made one time. It was very much bottom of the fridge making meal and it was spaghetti and scrambled eggs. Now it looks kind of awful (laughs) and bland on the the plate. But so I then decided I was going to Google spaghetti and scrambled eggs. And they took it that little step farther. Um, Now when I did it, I made it with... I made the spaghetti and scrambled eggs with black pepper and, and salt to give it, you know, to give it some kind of a, a depth. But here they're suggesting with garlic and grated cheese. And that would, I think the the grated cheese would actually give it a kind of an extra dimension. It would thicken it up and you'd be, <laughs> you'd be on to something then. It would also give it more colour, because the colour is what I find very much puts me off on that one. Oh, yeah, it's all just the one colour. It's all beige. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want a beige meal in front of me. No, but if you, if you, if you mix, especially the, the scrambled eggs with the cheese, with, with the dark cheese. You the scrambled it, eggs, is, I think, is the worst kind of egg. The consistency freaks me out. Yeah. Consistency of egg is weird enough anyway. And the fact that, um, depending on the way you cook it, changes the consistency entirely. There are very few foods that are like that. You fry it, it's kind of watery. You hard boil it, it's, well, hard. You scramble it, and it's like a brain. It's such a versatile food that it's like, what are you, egg? Okay, we know what egg is, but <coughs> why is so... Um, what are you? And which comes first, the egg <laughs> or the chicken? Um, Does that not freak you out, though, that the consistency's changed so much? Not re- well, they don't... 
They don't change that dramatically. Uh, they do now. You, if I were to slap a... Right, you're not from this planet. You're an alien. You're coming down. What amazes me is, with some milk and some eggs, how much you can actually get out <laughs> of them few eggs. Uh, that's what amazes me about eggs. But if if I was if you were an alien and you came to this planet and I lashed down a fried egg in front of you and a plate of scrambled eggs, you'd never think they came from the same thing. Ever. I don't know. The, te- the texture the is a bit similar. They don't taste the same, no. But texture would be kind of similar. No. Well, they are a bit... Anyway, so that's my uh, my meal. You can have your spaghetti, scrambled eggs with your garlic, your grated cheese to give it that bit of colour to that you you like so much. And uh, now we know. And your four euro bottle of of Baron Saint John from. We know what we're going to eat. We know what we're going to drink with it. But how, how are you going you to look get, snazzy? How will you look well when you're doing that? Yeah, it's very important to look snazzy mm. while eating your spaghetti and scrambled eggs. And drinking your um, your Baron St. John. So, what do you do? Where do you go to dress? Where do you go? Well, this week I chose the Milford Hospice Charity Shop, which is, of course, on Thomas Street in Limerick. High Couture. High Couture. Very high Couture. Um, now, actually, uh, if if you're just going in there for the crack... Comedian Danny Ryan also works in there. <laughs> yeah, so go in and ask him for a for a joke. Um ask him because for a comedians joke. love that. Ask him for a joke and then something they will never have in a charity shop just to see him panic. Yeah. So it's uh it's a it's a nice little shop in in its layout. It's quite tightly bound, which is something I prefer a more spacious spacious experience. But as you go in there's a line of books to your left. And there's ladies' uh, accoutrements all along I'm the. I'm a big fan of accoutrements. All along the first, uh, first wall, and to your right, as you go in the door, you have um, you have the the cashier's desk, but you also have a cabinet that's full of um, trinkets and stuff. Little trinkets. They're, that's my favorite part of charity shops. And they also have kind of toys and stuff like that. That kind of jazz around. Um, yeah. What kind of trinkets have you picked up in charity shops then? Loads of things, because I, I bought most of the, the accoutrements for the set in charity shops around Limerick. Because you, you just get wonderful things, like a clock. I got a clock for two quid that is just like this miniature grandfather clock. And, like, basically anything from the 1950s. Mm. They they just show up. Yeah. What kind of things would be from the 1950s? I'm just trying to imagine a decade. Um, like I can imagine like the Like some of those but. white and blue print plates and stuff okay. some candle holders I got a little kind of royal Doton stu- uh, statue of a woman again white and blue white and blue was just a big thing mm. uh, and you know those kind of statues the ones that mm. your every granny in the world had them what else did we get oh I got a uh, Puccine barrel for two quid that was really cool you, you, a whiskey barrel kind of thing yeah they're nice I will say I like those um, those I love the ones. Do you know the brown ones with the lighter brown, shade of brown towards the top? I like them ones. With so, how, so, whiskey so, cast. so dress yourself. So far, we're just filling up your house. Anyhow, um, yeah. What that shop particularly is good for, I believe, is overcoats. Ah. Um, it's one of the few shops that actually has a good, usually has a good range in overcoats. So um, it has, it also has a, a good range of. Of of kind of tweedy jackets, which which is another thing I like about it. Um, it wouldn't be fantastic for shirts. The shirts, it's kind of it's tightly packed, and shirts are hard to kind of size up in a, such a tightly packed yeah thing. It'd be probably nicer if it was thinned out, and you had half the amount of shirts, and you could see exactly what you know they put in the best shirts or whatever. No, get in more shirts. I can never get anything. I don't own any clothes from charity shops because none of them ever fit me. Yeah, that's another aspect of buying in the charity shops is uh, is size. Yeah, because it's all over the shop. But again, Limerick is absolutely full of charity shops at the minute. It is, and it, they're uh, they're an enjoyable kind of way of shopping because you'll get stuff in there, and like once it's gone, it's gone. And if it's uh, and it's basically a kind of a case of you get get lucky with what you're buying then go to the back of the shop you have shoes now there isn't great men's selection in shoes um, 
uh, there's a lot of, of women's shoes down there, but I wouldn't know anything about it, essentially. And then to the back, there's a few more books. Um, so if you if you are going into the shop for the books in the first place, you can get them at the front and the back of the shop. But all in all, I would say it's a it's one of the, the must-go-to charity shops, and it's, of course, going to a good cause, which is Milford Hospice. So there you go. There you are, Dressed, right? fed, and watered. Back of the net. Back of the net. So, Adam... The Saw Doctors had a song and it went, 25 quid would do me fine. It'd buy me a dinner and a bottle of wine. If the weight of your heart was along those lines, 25 quid would do me fine. 25 quid, you've got to go on a date. How? What do you do? Do I have to pay for her? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, okay, I don't like the, the dinner and fancy stuff anyway. So I got, I'd cut that out straight away. So I went, I went for lunch with a girl during the week and I was like, this is great. And, uh, it's fine. We get sp- I get to spend time with you. Know, I like that. But where'd you go? Uh, chocolate. Oh yeah. yeah. And um, it's like, but you don't need that to. Uh, you you don't need that to have a good time with someone. You don't need to have this gesture of oh look that there's money being spent on you or that we we can only eat. You know, it's this big no. So twenty five euros, right? I would go. Moody cow. Moody cow. But that's just, go, you go in and get your milkshake, drink your milkshake and you're done. No. Is that even well, a, a well, part let, of a no, date? No, no, let me finish. Okay, go get on. Get your moody cow. That brings you up to, say there's, <laughs> say there's about three euros. And you bring her out in the day. <laughs> 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 say there are about three euros each, now you're at six euros. Okay. So you go for a walk down to. Where's moody cow? Moody cow's in Arthur's Key. Okay. Then you come out of Arthur's Key and go down to Steamboat Key, the one near Clausey's. Okay, yeah, yeah. Go down there and look at the swans. Okay. Drink your moody cow. And keep Great. your back well firmly tur- turned to uh, Milano's behind you in the process. <laughs> <laughs> Lest you get ideas. So now you're, you, you've got a, a milkshake, it's quirky, you're going to, to see swans and stuff. And that honestly creates a more personable atmosphere anyway. Because if they're not having the crack with the swans, you know, everybody has to eat. That's a universal. That's why people go for these vacuous things because you immediately have something in common. We both need food to live. And if this, this person doesn't like swans and you're like, all right, okay, we might not be compatible or something. Okay. Um, okay, so that that's free. That's great. Then I would go for a coffee. Three euros. That's another six euros. Now we're at 12 euros. Any particular spot? ONF. ONF for Sage. Okay. Great. For Sage. Sage is across from... I'm just going to just give away my abode. It's on Catherine Street. Uh, but ONF is a lovely place because you can just watch people going up and down. And then there's another thing. Yeah, I like ONF. You can talk about people watching and, and whatever. And by that time, you've spent 12 euros. You're probably at about 6 o'clock. You can suggest, oh, would you like to go for a drink? And you've got a 10 euro left to buy two drinks. Okay, where will you go? It's a date, so you want to go somewhere. And quiet. at 6 o'clock, you've already stipulate the time it would be so yeah. you've got to go, go somewhere that won't be like Tom Collins awful. Tom Collins fair enough yeah, yeah so so, so women if you're listening that's the kind of 25 euros value you can expect <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on any date with Adam Lahey um, excellent okay we'll play another song for you and we'll be back in a minute with what Adam with uh, the gaff of the week or the ages of the week we haven't decided yet okay um, I'm going to play and I remember her by Jim Crochet. Mm. What a do with you. And I remember her. We're back. We sure are. And, and we decided to take a look at Egypt of the Week, which uh, is I, another I, new feature. I prefer Egypt of the Week than the you're, Gaff of the Week. You're getting that for free as well. Mm. For Egypt of the Week. And our Egypt of the Week this week is Sir Bob Geldof, who's just been on a roll of late. <laughs> what an Egypt. What an Egypt. Um, aside from his, his recent re- re-release of Do They Know It's Christmas Time uh, to raise money for a Ebola w- awareness or whatever, um, and then being faced by an alternative one being done by African musicians to... Do the serve the exact same purpose, but not be seen as being kind of condescending. Um, <laughs> they he what was their song called? I can't remember what song they did, but it was it was basically kind of to highlight 
he's been criticized widely for being condescending towards towards African people. Oh, it is. It's it's total kind of post colonial. Yeah, and I mean, thirty years ago, it was probably fine, but now it's kind of. So tell us what he did. But uh, aside from that, recently, uh, Andrew Mitchell, the former government chief whip in Britain, was up for. He was up in court suing for libel, um, the news group newspapers, for because he had called apparently a policeman outside of the Houses of Parliament in London a pleb. Ooh. Yeah, it's kind of a no no. Um and what's funny about it as well is it's so archaic, it's kinda of like Yeah. Oh, but there's nothing not archaic about the British government. Yeah, well there you go. But riling in behind this conservative politician was um Sir Bob. Sir Bob. And according to Sir Bob he said we became friends because th- of his qualities as a leader and advocate for the less fortunate. I thought he was a good man. We were an unlikely pair of friends. I came from a poor Irish, not particularly well-educated background, and he does not. I am, in fact, a pleb, and he is not. Never once in all our time did he patronize me, talk down to me, behave in a superior manner to me, deride, insult, or dismiss me or my opinions, nor did I ever find him the pre- Posterous pantomime pa- patrician and frankly Woodhousian superior manner attributed to him in the sun and others. Now, you have to first of all recognize that um, alliteration such as preposterous pantomime patrician tends not to be the choice uh, wording used by plebs. Or an off the cuff conversation. Or referencing an early 20th century writer uh, w- by ca- saying the frankly Woodhousian superior manner attributed to him. But more so than all of this is the fact that he completely missed the ball when he described himself as a pleb as opposed to a multimillionaire. I, is a sir, does that OB or whatever? I'm, I'm not 100% OB, sure. OB, yeah. But yeah, he's been elevated in, in the ranks of British... What gets me in it is is that right? He goes um, whatever, and yet he still referred to himself as a pleb. Yeah, was it, it's, it, in the quote you just read out is one of my favorite bits in it. Is never once in all our time did you patronize me, talk down to me, behave in a superior manner, deride or insult me. They're all the same thing, Bob. Yeah, but also what's more is and it is patronizing. Just the, to just say the that. fact that he felt that he couldn't do it to this policeman because he didn't talk down, deride or insult Sir Bob. I just find the whole thing rather ridiculous. And why is he getting involved? But what are you thinking, Geldof? <laughs> why are I you don't, there? I often wonder, does Geldof think at all? Because it's just... <sighs> oh, Egypt. Egypt of the week. Egypt of the week. Now we have events, things from things that are going on in Limerick. We need to work on that jingle. Not mm. even a jingle, it's just me shouting a bit. Okay, what have we by way of events? Well, on Monday, which would be tomorrow... You can see the Magic Numbers in Dolan's Warehouse. They're a really, really good band. They're, I think they're English. They've got some nice tunes. On Wednesday, you can see the Water Boys again in Dolan's. You've just heard, no, you're about to hear them soon. On From Thursday to Sunday in Fires Gage, you can see The Hunt for Red Willy. <laughs> uh, the Hunt for Red Willy is about a landlord, I think, who meets Red Willy, who is a bit of a trickster. And it's it's a comedy farcical thing all, all the way around it's supposed to be very good go see that and from Wednesday to Saturday Fish Amble Theatre are bringing a new play to the Lime Tree called Underneath I know relatively little about it but Fish Amble are a very exciting new theatre company on the scene in Dublin at the moment so go and see them they're on in the Lime Tree yeah. events things from Limerick and not Limerick excellent yeah. and I think it would now be an appropriate time to play the Water Boys. A lovely owl tune. The Hole of the Moon. Back it in, Nate. That doesn't mean backside. <laughs> that was The Water Boys. The Hole of the Moon. Yay! Yay. Not the best song, though. Um, yeah, best song. No, their best song is uh, yeah, Fisherman's Blues. Best song. No, it's definitely Fisherman's Blues. Uh, best song. No, if you agree with me and not Stephen, text into 
083-44-666-555. If you agree with Stephen, you can text into some other number. Just tell your friend. Hmm. Hmm. So, you have a quick pondering before we leave it? We do. The philosophical question of the week. Each week, because we talk about silly things, uh, like calling people idiots, we try and leave the show ending with a little bit more high brownness and th- that was that wasn't an echo. That was just me stuttering. Um, so this week's question, we're trying to keep it topical. What's the best kind of protest? And I'm going to say I really like the sit-in protest. Yeah. Hmm. That would be my favorite. I think. Um, it's just a real kind of a, a nuisancey one. I remember when we were in first year in college, people used to do sit-in protests in the lodge, where they just sit on the dance floor and go, "No, we're not leaving." You can't make us leave. And they just sit down and the whole floor will be filled with people. <laughs> it's not a protest at all. It's just people being idiots. But yeah, that's a good one. Um, I like I, to sit in. It, it was initially, uh, it was introduced, I think, in um, against Ford in Detroit yeah. in 1936. In Jan- no, December 1935. Uh, it was introduced in Ford in Detroit and it was effective. It very quickly kind of petered out. It was initially used by the Congress of Industrial Organisations as a kind of a tool, a striking tool, but it was quickly petered out because it was deemed to be illegal in America mm. at, the, at that time. That's the best kind of protest. Well, it was, I, I thought it was fairly kind of... No, it's good because you know those ones with like anonymous and stuff where people wear the Guy Fawkes mask and it's mm. like by removing your face, you make yourself less of a citizen so you're not really protesting, you're just giving out. Yeah. So what's your favour? Standing around shouting. Not hurting anyone, but making your voice known, just standing around shouting. Mm. The way they're doing it at the moment now, over the water things, is, is very, very good. Yeah. Well done, keep fighting the good fight. Keep it real. And that's it from us, and in our whole new format. I hope you enjoyed it, folks. Um, if you have anything to contribute, or any thoughts on our show, just send them off to the Filibusters uh, radio page, and we Filibusters Comedy Hour, it's yep. called on Facebook. Just start a letter, dear Filibusters... And then write it down, and then put it in an envelope and put it in your chimney. No, that's wrong. No, it's the other one. That's Santa, isn't it? Um, back in the day, it would have been Santa. Right. Right, so do message us on Facebook and let us know how it gets, how we get on, how we got on with our new format, if you think there's anything that could be changed or anything you'd like to see happen um, while we're pondering over it. Uh, I'm Stephen Ryan. And I'm not. And I hope you have a brilliant week. Enjoy yourselves. Take Keep care. It real. Who else have we got? Oh, John Spallan. Who else have we got? Oh, John Spallan. Not the singer. Not the singer. Not the folk singer. Not the folk singer. No, this like couldn't sing along with his head. Good job he is. Useless. Good job he is. 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 You're very welcome along and thanks for listening. You're very welcome along and thanks for listening.